Today's lesson is on combination of functions. Okay, our learning objective is I can create new functions and state the domain algebraically and graphically by applying addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of two functions. So where are we on the spectrum? It's the first time I've heard this. I'm a novice, or I remember all of this from Algebra 2. I'm an expert, or somewhere in between. All right, let's start out by reviewing what is a domain with no restrictions? None at all. When I have no restrictions, my domain is all real numbers. In words, I can say it with that double script R or in interval notation from minus infinity to plus infinity. They all mean the same thing. So when do I have restrictions? Right now I know I have restrictions when I have a fraction. So the denominator cannot equal zero. And I have a restriction with radicals with an even index. The restriction is the radicand, which is what is under the radical symbol, has to be greater than or equal to zero. And if I have a radical with an even index in the denominator, then the radicand has to be greater than zero. Okay, so we are talking about some difference, product, and quotient of two different functions. So the sum of f of g of x is f of x plus g of x the difference of f minus g of x is f of x minus g of x. The product of f times g of x is f of x times g of x. And the quotient of f divided by g of x is f of x divided by g of x, where g of x cannot equal to zero. So the domain of my combination of functions is going to be the intersection of f of x. I'm sorry. Yeah, the intersection f of x. So intersection is this upside down u and g of x. So intersection. And that means I'm common to both. Both functions. Okay, so let's do a couple examples here. Given f of x equals 2x plus 1 and g of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 1, Find f plus g of x and its domain, then evaluate the sum when x equals 2. So starting out with the domain for f of g of x, I do not have a fraction and I do not have a radical, so my domain is all real numbers. And g of x, my domain has no restrictions because I'm not a, a fraction and I'm not a radical. So all real numbers. So f of g of x says I'm going to add f of x plus g of x. So this is going to be 2x plus 1 plus x squared plus 2x minus 1. So I am going to add my like terms place them in descending order. So I have x squared plus 2x plus 2x is 4x and plus 1 and minus 1 totals 0. 
So f plus g of x is x squared plus 4. My domain is all real numbers because I have no restrictions. And evaluate f of g at x equals 2. So I'm going to substitute in 2 for x. So 2 squared plus 4 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 8 is 12. Oops. All right, let's try number 2. I have the same functions again, but this time I'm going to find the difference. And I'm still evaluating at x equals 2. So this time I'm going to subtract my functions. So I have 2x two, two plus 1 minus x squared plus 2x minus 1. So the first thing I need to do is distribute my negative 1 on all the terms inside the parentheses. So I change the signs. So 2x plus 1 minus x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now I'm going to combine like terms, right in descending order. So I have negative x squared plus 2. Evaluate at x equals 2. So this is going to be negative 2 squared plus 2. So this is really negative 1 times 2 times 2. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Okay, so now we've covered adding and subtracting. Let's do multiplying. Oops. Okay, so uh, let's look again. It says given f of x equals x squared and g of x equals x minus 3, find f times g of x and its domain, then evaluate the product when x equals 4. Okay, so starting out, um, oops. Starting out, f of x has no restrictions, so that's all real numbers. g of x has no restrictions, so all real numbers. So I'm going to multiply these. So I have x squared times x minus 3. I'm going to distribute x squared on both terms. So I get x cubed minus 3x squared. The domain is all real numbers, because again, I still have no fractions or decimals, or fractions or radicals with an even index. And let's eva evaluate at f times g at 4. So I have 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared. 4 cubed is 64. 4 squared is 16 times 3 is 48. Minus 48, 64 minus 48 is 16. Okay, 3 of the 4 down. Let's do division now, or quotient. Given f of x equals the square root of x, and g of x equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, find f divided by g of x and its domain, then evaluate the quotient when x equals 4. Okay, so let's, let's start out with I'm going to take f divided by g. So f is the square root of x divided by g. 
which is the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, my domain. So when I say anything under my radical, so for my domain here, for f of x is the square root of x, the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. So this is x is greater than or equal to zero. For g of x, this is Four, the square root of 4 minus x squared. Again, the radicand has to be greater than or equal to 0. So 4 minus x squared is greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Negative x squared is greater than or equal to negative 4. When I divide by negative 1, not only do I change the signs, but I have to flip the inequality. So this is x squared is less than or equal to 4. So what is my domain? So I have a... So less than or equal to 4, this has to do with 2 and negative 2. So negative 2 and 2. So I'm in between 2 and negative 2. Um, so this one is greater than or equal to 0, and this includes these. I should put that. And this one, greater than or equal to 0, is here. So what is common between the two is right here. So this is what's common between the two. And it includes 0 and it includes 2. So my domain in interval notation is from 0 to 2, and I include 0 and 2. Okay, let's do a graphing one. Okay, so here I'm doing the same thing, but instead of with algebra, I am graphing. Use the graphs of f and g to graph h of x equals f plus g of x. Start with the defined points. Okay, so let's start looking. What is f plus g at negative 3? So if I take f at negative 3, oops, let's Let's do it a little bit more here. So f at negative 3, so if I take f at negative 3, x, <clears throat> y is negative 3. And what is g at negative 3? g at negative 3 is 1. So I'm adding negative 3 plus 1. So I get negative 2. So f at negative 1 is 0. And g at negative 1 is 2. So I'm adding 0 plus 2. And I get 2. f <coughs> at 2, at 2 is 2, and g at 2 is negative 1, so 2 plus negative 1 is 1. So my new points, what my new points are, let's 
do orange. So my new points are this is X and this is Y. So my new points are negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 2, and 2, 1. So this is my new points that I'm plotting for my function H. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 2, and 2, 1. So you just use the points on the graph. So this is my new function H of X. Okay, that's the end.